Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Update. Today's video is the day after the aftermath of the crash and what I was buying, what I was selling, do I have any regrets and I guess why I was doing that. I'm also going to look at some of the positive news on the growth and development of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Of course, we get these flash crashes and people freak out thinking we're going into some sort of major crash, but there's still a lot of massive growth and development going on as well. But we're going to look at the charts at the end of the video to go through what it is I was doing there. I also think there might be a bug with coin market cap right now. So that's why I've turned the camera on. Let's get started. Make sure you've hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, click all so you see these videos pop up. That was your chance to do that. Let's dive in. First piece, fear and greed. We've got to update this. 45 is today. So the fear is at 45. Yesterday was 47. Nothing at 15 or under, which was part of the plan. So if you're new to the channel, we were looking at a fear and greed plan to be purchasing Bitcoin at those lows. And the average price, the average buying price was 34,000 USD for Bitcoin. Now, let's hope this is still here. Okay, market caps are gone. Volume is gone. Maybe coin market cap is doing an update. But guess what? Look at what we see here. We got some hex. This might be the first time I have mentioned the word hex on the channel. I have mentioned it on Instagram. So if you follow me over there, check out Instagram and Twitter. I don't go into it a lot. It has obviously made whoever's holding it tons of money from the early days. But will it stick around in the top 10? I think that is a question that needs to be asked at this point. All the volumes are gone. Maybe if I hit refresh, this will all clear itself up, but I don't want to do that right now. This is the day for all of the Hexians out there. The big one here is Solana for me. We're at 71% up for the week and possibly you guys as well, which you've been following the channel. Looking at this during the bear market, well, the downtrend bear market, whatever it is you want to call it, these prices were $20 to $30. And I was looking for strong horses based on the charts, looking at our 50% levels. That's how I was planning my attack. So Solana was one of those. Uh, ADA was one of those. And ETH was another one. Of course, FTT was in there as well, which has been doing reasonably well. Another one of these cryptos, which is up and everything else is in the red. That's what I was looking at for some of the strength or weakness in these, in these projects, which was... At the lows where it's just like buy everything. I, I, I don't subscribe to that that way of investing because most people have a limited amount of funds. So if I go through the top 50 and tell you, yeah, Filecoin's great, buy some Filecoin, buy some Matic, buy some AVAX, buy some VeChain, buy some anything. Most people run out of money or they'll have to spread about 50 bucks between all of them. And that's not how I like to invest. I'd rather have my attention focused. That's just me. You might have your own plan do what you need to do, okay? I'm just mentioning why I did these things and why I was looking so hard at particular projects like Solana and FTT. I think the others will move as well. They'll probably have their day. They'll, they'll increase in value, uh, but we want the strong stuff. And today, here is your day for Hex. Look at that little pink and yellow icon up here in the top 10 for you guys. Okay, let's look at some news and then get onto some charts. And I'll just do the bad news uh, at the beginning. 100,000 worth of Ethereum NFTs destroyed by OpenSea. So there was a bug in the ENS. So the Ethereum naming services. That's what it is down here. Names apparently resulted in a, at least 42 collectibles being accidentally burned. So they were trying to transfer this to their wallet and it just came up with an error and sent it to a random address right here. So that Nick.eth was trying to send it to his address to, to purchase it, hit transfer, entered Nick.eth, moments later, transaction complete, random.eth transferred to blah, blah, blah. So that's how they lost it. This was a bug. 100,000 gone in NFTs. It's a new space, people making tons of money, and of course, there are going to be some problems. Moving on to some of the massive stuff. Bitcoin. Buying the dip, third largest Bitcoin wallet just bought 23 million worth of Bitcoin. The mysterious third largest Bitcoin whale bought 490 BTC. So that was at around 46,800. And then uh, I think there was a following 38 BTC as well, giving a combined value of around $23 million there. So it was nearly 500 BTC to the stash. So if you are getting some of your BTC at this mid-40s price, you're buying in with the whales. 
Next piece is Bill Miller. Uh, so he sees a, well, his hedge fund sees Bitcoin having significant upside potential as digital gold. Miller's Opportunity Trust, Bill Miller's hedge fund, state that Bitcoin has significant upside potential as a form of digital gold. Why are they looking at this now? Well, they aren't. They've been looking at it for quite a while. We've been, uh, been observers of Bitcoin for a long time. And during the quarter, the fund received approval to invest in grayscale Bitcoin trust. So what do they do? They bought Bitcoin on June 20th, which is one of those low days. One of the major lows. We had about three major lows. One in May, one in June, and one in July. And they all happen around that 20th of the month. So we're looking at September as being... One of those down months, if you've been following the channel, uh, I looked at quarter threes, which is your July, August, September. Not much tends to happen over the last 11 years of data. Obviously, it's not every quarter like that, but I'll do a video on that um, later this week or, or next. And uh, September is one of those days which tends to have a correction. And that's why I'm still looking. We've got September 11th coming up in a couple of days time, maybe three days time for the guys on the other side of the world. And that may be a bit of a significant point in the markets, which tends to be the case, especially during major anniversaries. And this is the 20-year anniversary of 9-11. I'm not saying we're going to break to new lows beneath 30K, but it's just one of those times in the market to pay attention to because the emotions get extra high. And looking at uh, how Bitcoin has played out over the last 12 months or so, it loves to do moves around that mid of the month, maybe up to the 20th something of the month those times tend to have turning points. Not every month, but if you go back and have a look at the chart, you will see that it happens very, very regularly. The fund manager added, with gold's market capitalization greater than 11 trillion, Bitcoin's current cap close, uh, close to 600 billion would have a long way to go to catch up. So elaborating here, we are early in a continuing adoption curve and Bitcoin will be volatile, but we think the risk reward is attractive. Blockstream to pilot renewable Bitcoin mining facility with Australia's Macquarie Group. So guys in Australia know should know who Macquarie Group is. Big bank here. And this is looking like uh, they want to get into the cryptocurrency space. So Australia-based financial services giant Macquarie Group and Bitcoin technology firm Blockstream have linked arms to pilot a mining facility powered by renewable energy. Uh, I wanted to pay note or pay attention to this because you don't often see this in Australia, especially with how harsh regulations are here. And uh, to see one of the Aussie banks getting into the space and investing in cryptocurrency, I, I see that as just another green light for the space, especially for Australia. The big one here, while we're wearing the shirt today, the ETH cross Apple shirt, I guess. We're at 47%. Now, if we get to the flipping ETH to beat Bitcoin, to flip Bitcoin, 0.16 on the Bitcoin chart. I haven't looked at this for some time because we've been sitting around this level for a little while now, the 0 0.07, so the 7% of Bitcoin value. That's at, what, 3,400, continuing to change at the moment. Should we get to the halfway point, half of Bitcoin's total market cap, not half of Bitcoin's price, but half of Bitcoin's market cap, then we want to get to the 8%. So that'll give us a price of 3,700 US dollars per ETH. This is a big one here. Standard Chartered Report structurally values Ethereum at 26,000 to 35,000. So I mentioned a couple of dot points here, but they have a really good report, which I've gone through uh, and some of the notes and how they got there. We look at number one, the financial market versus currency analogy. For Bitcoin, we compare credit card market cap against potential transactions in the unbanked sector to arrive at a valuation. For ETH, we compare the value of the global banks against the value of global credit card companies to establish ETH's value relative to Bitcoin. Based on this, we estimate a potential value of ETH of Oh, for ETH of US dollars for 35,000, so 10 times the current level. A portfolio optimization approach starting the optimi optimization from the previous BTC peak, so late 2017, gives an optimal allocation to crypto of around 2%. So remember, we were, uh, the, the banks and hedge funds and investment f funds were looking at 1% of their total funds to go into cryptocurrency. Now, this bank here in uh, the UK, Standard Chartered, is looking at around 2% of global portfolios. Given the broader uh, value, sorry, given the broader value case for ETH 
compared to Bitcoin, we believe that ETH's total market cap will catch up to Bitcoin's over time. Based on this, we value ETH at 26,000 USD. So the first is around 35K and the second price point is around 26K for ETH. So if you wanted to use somewhere in the middle, call it 30, 31,000, it's still a long way from where we currently are. Will it happen in this cycle? You know, I, I can't say, I don't think anyone could say, but this is where they're valuing, it, valuing ETH at in the, in the future. The report also mentioned some weaknesses and some threats looking at uh, the complexity uh, being compounded by the fact that both ETH 1.0 and ETH 2.0 are running in parallel for a protracted period of time, uh, the researcher states. And the other piece was a regulatory landscape and competitive landscape, obviously with the likes of ADA and Sol coming through and every other smart contract that is uh, a little faster and potentially developing faster as well. Taking a look at our SwiftX portfolio, if you guys want to link to SwiftX, check it out. Link is down below. $10 of free Bitcoin if you sign up using the link provided in the description. So our portfolio is sitting at 21500 This is based on Solana's continued growth, hitting over $200. US uh, FTX is another project that's in here. Their token FTT, so sitting around 77 ADA, $2.40. And Ethereum, I, I bought Ethereum, got rid of the USD and just bought Ethereum. It's now sitting around nearly 3,500 US dollars. So yesterday we we're at about 18,000 USD and today we're at 21,500 USD. So a nice little climb here from the strong horses. Now this is an Australian exchange, SwiftX, as I said, the link is down below, but you can change the dollars here. You can change the currency, Aussie, US and for New Zealand users as well. You can use that link down there. Now on to what I was looking at yesterday, so Solana. Um, I mentioned this yesterday, I sold my soul. I really just wanted to put that in a tweet, but I did sell some, not all. People were all saying, why would you sell anything? It was one of your strong horses, you want to hold it forever. Yes, that is true, but I also want to be risk-free. So I bought in earlier around $25 to $32, and so that um, brings me up to around a four to five X return from where I sold out some of the portfolio, not all of it, not even the majority of it. It only needed to be a small fraction to be able to make this a risk-free trade now. So I, I don't have any cash that I put into it. All my initial capital has been pulled out and now everything else is just cream. So if it tanks to zero, I don't lose anything. I just miss out on all of that profit. Uh, but if it keeps going up from here, then I've still got a ton in there to continue up. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to trading for cryptos, for anything. I just want to be a bit more risk-free, a bit more conservative. Sure, I could have left it in there, made another 30% today, but at some point I've got to sell to realize those gains and you just don't know exactly when that top is going to come. The point of investing is to take a big chunk out of the middle. If you can walk away with 50 to 70% out of the middle is massive. If you walk away with 50% out of the middle, you are doing better than 99% of people. Most people will lose in the markets. So that's a tweet over there. If you're not following, go over and do that. Instagram, Twitter, way easier for me to chat to you guys there and I can get a tweet out. This takes 30 seconds, two minutes, uh, whereas a video takes a lot longer to update you with what's going on. All right, onto the charts and I'll go into this in more detail tomorrow. The pink arrows are the quarters and then the blue lines are September. The purple boxes are what happens in the fourth quarter and this seems to be one of the outliers up here. So, I'll look at this further. September is one of those months which we don't generally see the market doing too much. As you can see, we're currently in our September month and the previous September months been red, red maybe on the way down, but the fourth quarter, something generally happens. If it's not a big move, you know, we're getting some peaks that we saw in 2017. These are massive moves, even though they look small on the chart, uh, a big move out of these lows. This was a turning point. So the market is crashing and that quarter managed to turn the market. That takes a lot of energy to turn, even though you might consider it, oh, you know, the market's down, it didn't do anything. To turn a market is, is a lot of work. And so um, from the fourth quarters is generally we see a turn or a big strong move as well. Not every time, but we do see something major like that happen more often than not. So in terms of what I was buying, Bitcoin, yes. Ethereum, yes, I like these sort of bars when they just dump it hit on our 50 percent level uh, it came up and hit support from that previous consolidation period and then we had a reasonable 
bounce out of it to close above this zone here. And so there was also some volume coming in. So there's a lot of factors for me saying get onto these because when you see these bars, sometimes they're followed by further downside, but sometimes they're not. Either way, I just like the risk reward. I just see it as a reset and it's a good time to be buying at that at that point. So this was May. We had the 19th, big day down, big volume. Sure, the market held up for a couple of days or a few days and then it fell a little lower. But ultimately, it uh, it held out, had another bounce down, another bounce down. But really, it wasn't too far off that low and then the market took off from that point. So even if we get a few more bounces down, sure, I might have to wait a few weeks. Maybe I've got to wait a few months. I don't know, but I'm happy with this one for now and I'm happy to dollar cost average in from this point rather than dollar cost averaging in at these times. But the other times I do like our breakouts as well. So the big dips on a bull trend and then you have to believe that that's the bull trend as well. You have to have your, your own confirmations for why you think this is going to be up to be able to be buying these dips rather than buying dips in a bear market. So if you believe that we're not going up to any new time highs anymore, all time highs, and you think this is more what the market is going to do, then you probably don't want to be buying any of these times on the way down. You want to wait for the turn in the market and then start to buy on the dips on the way out. That's how I see the market. And at the moment, I think we're going to see a few more, you know, a bit more time sideways, a few more times down. That's why I'm dollar cost averaging now. And then potentially we'll get the move later in quarter four, which is why I brought up Bitcoin. Same deal for Cardano. I see very similar signs here. Nice big dump out of, uh, you know, this all time high area. This did break down pretty far to our levels that we were looking at, uh, these highs of the swings and then this zone of the all-time highs and uh, just above the swing tops. So it did wick down quite far. It hit our 50%, which is fantastic. But the close was reasonably good being that it closed just on or just above the previous old all-time high. So maybe we get a few more days down. Maybe this thing just starts to plateau out at this old swing top. I've seen that before. Um, eventually, I want to see it break the blue and then come above that. So I'm happy with a bit of dollar cost averaging here. I'm not saying I'm piling everything in at this point because sure, it could go a little bit lower. Maybe I'm completely wrong and that is it. This is the top. September was it. Market's off. I don't think that's the case at the moment, which is why I'm dollar cost averaging in here. But of course, the breakouts were a good time to buy less risk as well. Solana continues up, we're at 208, just peaked out at 215 at the time of this recording. And uh, this little area was where I was exiting through here because I just felt like I had made a fair chunk of change from uh, that 25 to $32 level. And I was happy to take my risk off the table. Now, sure, like I said, it could have kept going, held in, but at some point, risk reward, greed and fear. I don't need to get that much more greedy uh, and I can still hold on with the rest of the portfolio. So hopefully you've got that in your plan as well to identify, is this the right time for me? Am I starting to hold on just because of hope and, and greed or does my plan say not to sell? Like there's still so much more upside, even with massive drawdowns, I'm just holding on. Different um, strategies and scenarios, just do what works for you in this case. The last one, which I rarely ever look at, XRP. XRP has had a big dump and I'll just make mention of it. Even if you don't care about XRP, look at these charts, pay very close attention to the Bitcoin, the, the altcoin and Bitcoin chart. All right. So people say, why aren't you talking about uh, XRP? It is a trader's coin. You know, this should at some point pump to some sort of resistance levels and then probably fade back down, which is it has done every single time in history. Uh, and I just mentioned this one because on CoinMarketCap, it had such a big drop, 25% and nothing else has fallen that far. Like even Algorand's up 60% at the moment. Everything else has at least recovered back to its close from yesterday or is hovering around it, whereas XRP is just having that extra hard time to, um, to hold itself where it is. So I'll leave you with that. Solana looking good. That's why I sold some Sol and bought a little more ADA, a little or some more ETH and a little more BTC as well. Keeping it conservative, you guys might have other ideas, other plans. If you do, 
let us know in the comments down below which altcoins do you want to shill. Go and check out the pinned post down below. Shill your altcoins down there. Maybe you got onto Algorand before it broke out and uh, you know enjoying those gains if you are taking some profits. So which coins did you buy up in the dip? Shill us in the comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff down below. You know what to do if you found some value from the video. I'll see you on Instagram or on Twitter. Remember the links to SwiftX are down below if you want to sign up uh, to get your other Australian exchange or maybe this is your first Australian cryptocurrency exchange. And I'll leave it there. Wrapping it up, I'll catch you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.